My 35 gallon trash can rain barrel has been working great since I installed it, but throughout the growing season, I would occasionally run out of water and knew one day I would need to increase my rain collection capacity. Well, that day has finally come as I prep for the upcoming growing season. This is still a learning process for me, but I figured I would bring you along for the journey, so let's jump right into it. I first began with removing my old rain barrel setup and any other components that may no longer be necessary. Since I planned on installing my new rain barrels at an elevated height, I needed to close off the hole used for my rain diverter. To reduce the amount of work I needed to do, I just used the included hole cover by Earth Monet that is usually used during the winter season. I decided to place my new rain barrels under my deck since the foundation surface is flat and no digging would be required. I used concrete blocks as the primary base for my rain barrels since they are easy to work with and low cost. To make my platform for the barrels, I used 2x4 pressure treated wood. To keep the video a little shorter, I will leave a link below to where you can find all the dimensions I use to make my platform. When assembling my platform, I pre-drilled all my holes and then screwed in 3 inch screws that are designed to be used with pressure treated wood. Next, I needed to make my wooden platform level to help prevent my rain barrels from shifting or falling over. I first placed a piece of 2x4 behind the platform to find the angle that I needed to cut my wooden feet. To cut the angled line, I used my miter saw, but you can also do this with a circular saw or jigsaw. Once the base of my foot was cut, I noticed that putting a piece of 2x4 underneath my platform on the right side was the perfect height to create a level surface. I used 2x4s as the top foundation since I had leftover wood and spaced them the thickness of a 2x4 apart. I left a larger gap between the 2x4s where I planned on running some of my water connections. Next, I worked on my new 60 gallon rain barrels. Note, if you're building a similar rain collection system using barrels, make sure the barrels are food grade. You can also usually find great deals on marketplaces online and I purchased my two barrels for $35 each. For my water outflow connections, I drilled a hole using a one and one fourth inch hole saw in an area on the base that was flat and did not have any markings. I used 120 grit sandpaper to help smooth out the hole and remove any burrs. Using soapy water, I next install EarthMinded's threaded rubber seal. This is optional, but to help make sure I would not run into any leaking problems down the road, I added some silicone sealant around the rubber seal. Next, I added Teflon tape to the 3 4 inch PVC clothes riser that would thread into my rubber seal. Next, I worked on drilling my inflow hole using a 1 and 1 half inch hole saw. I installed a 3 4 inch bulkhead fitting into the hole. I like this fitting because it has double gaskets which helps create a watertight seal. Note, to reduce the chances of a leak in the future, I also applied silicone sealant to the fitting off camera. Once the bulkhead fitting was installed, I installed a 3 4 inch PVC clothes riser into the fitting. Next, I installed a swivel PVC hose adapter onto the clothes riser so that I could quickly disconnect the rain barrels from the downspout if I ever needed to. Mm -hmm. 
Note, I applied PVC cement to all my PVC components at some point in the project, so if you do not see me doing so in this video, just know I either did it off camera or came back and did it later in the project. Next, I used a piece of scrap PVC in my level to figure out where I needed to drill the hole that would connect my system to the downspout. I used a 1 and 1 8 inch spade bit to drill out the hole. Once I drilled far enough to see light through the hole to prevent wood blowout, I finished drilling my hole from the opposite side. I next inserted a PVC pipe through the hole and installed a PVC male garden hose fitting onto one end of the pipe. With the pipe inserted in the hole, I measured and cut the pipe down to size and installed a 90 degree PVC fitting on the exterior side of the wall. To provide another quick disconnect point on the exterior side of the wall, I installed a male garden hose fitting and swivel PVC hose adapter onto the PVC pipe. Note, there are many ways you can make a quick disconnect, but this is the way I chose to do it since I had some of the parts already on hand, but use what method works best for your application. It was also important to keep the PVC pipe level so the diverter would work properly, so I used a level throughout the process. I used a 3 4 inch PVC conduit clamp to help hold the PVC pipe in place. Once I reached the downspout, I used a speed square to help mark where on the downspout I would need to drill my new hole for the diverter. I used a 2 and 1 8 inch hole saw to drill the hole in the downspout. Using soapy water, I installed the diverter into the drilled out hole and then used the self-tapping screws to secure it to the downspout. I used the 3 4 inch PVC coupling which has the perfect size to connect the diverter to my PVC setup. Once the downspout connections were completed, I worked on finishing up the inflow connections to my first rain barrel. Next, I worked on the water outflow connections. I used 3 4 inch ball valves throughout the outflow system to allow me to temporarily disconnect one of the rain barrels from the system if I ever needed to perform any maintenance. Next, I began connecting the first rain barrel to the outflow PVC pipe. If you enjoy these types of videos, let me know by pressing the like button and subscribing as it helps to inform others about this channel and it also motivates me to continue to spend my time making these videos. I would also like to take a quick moment to express my appreciation to Joseph Benjamin for recently signing up for the True Supporter membership. Once the two barrels were connected, I began working on drilling another hole in the wall for the water outflow connection. I next inserted a PVC pipe through the hole and installed a PVC male garden hose fitting onto the end of the pipe. Similar to the inflow PVC pipe, I added a swivel PVC hose adapter so that I could quickly disconnect the outflow PVC pipe if I ever needed to. Next, I 
Next, I had a last minute idea to reinstall my sediment filter onto the inflow PVC connection to help reduce sediment from entering my rain barrels. If you have the option, I would recommend you install gutter guards or some other filtering method on the downspout. After the filter was installed, I resumed working on the exterior PVC connections for my outflow PVC pipe. I installed a male guarding hose fitting on the end of the outflow connection so that I could quickly connect or disconnect standard guarding hoses from the system. Next, I tested the system by temporarily connecting my transfer pump to the rain barrel system using a garden hose. It had rained the day before and my rain barrels were completely filled with water so this was the perfect time to perform a test. Note, if you are new to this channel and you are curious how I set up my transfer pump, my solar system and other electrical parts of this system, I will leave links in the description below to videos I created that go into much greater detail for those topics. To add a little more protection to my PVC that would be exposed to direct sunlight, I disconnected it from my system and gave it a few coats of all-in-one spray paint that works on plastics. Note, you will also want to use some fine 200 grit sandpaper to scratch up the surface of the PVC so the paint can better adhere to the surface. To help prevent water from rain from building up inside the inflow and outflow holes I drilled, I added silicone around the exterior PVC connections. Next, I worked on adding a vent to the lid of each rain barrel so that air trapped in the barrel can have an escape point as the water rises and falls. I ended up using a 90 degree PVC elbow with male pipe thread since I already had it on hand. Depending on your setup, you could also get away with drilling small holes in the top of the barrel. To help prevent insects from entering my rain barrels through the vents, I cut a small corner of some insect netting I sometimes use to cover my plants. To hold the netting onto the PVC, I use Velcro ties, but you can also use zip ties. Off camera, I went ahead and reinstalled my float switch that I have wired to automatically turn my transfer pump off if my rain barrels are almost empty so I do not damage my pump. I will leave a video link in the description that goes into more detail for how I wired and set up my float switch for my previous rain barrel. Since Earth Minded included a don't drink water warning sticker in the diverter kit, I figured I would go ahead and apply it to the rain barrels. After everything was installed, I performed a simulated rain test to verify the system worked correctly. Overall, this has been a fun experience increasing my rainwater collection capacity. I definitely recommend if you have been thinking about starting a rain collection system to go for it, but be sure to check your state laws to see if there are any restrictions. If you found this video useful or think others might, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.